Attention everyone. It is seven o'clock. It's time for the Franklin County Community School Corporation to have its board of directors meeting. Um, if I could get everyone to uh, rise and cite the Pledge of Allegiance with the flag over there. And then observe a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, first up on our uh, agenda is the consent items. We'll be doing that a little bit differently because we had a request to single some items out. So we will be voting on the minutes, expenditures, and resignations. Is there any discussion? Do we have a motion? Okay, I can't see anything down there, so you'll have to look. Katie and I second. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, next up will be grants. Um, you, you want me to read? Okay. All right, we have four grants. The first one is the National FSA Lilly Grant in the amount of $9,874 for the Ag Department, um, Franklin County Community Foundation in the amount of $400 for the Drama Department, um, Franklin, Franklin County Community Foundation in the amount of $5,570 for purchase of new mascot uniforms and um, the foundation for $652.80 for girls basketball program. In donations, we have two um, Haspen Acres in the amount of 1,000 for Laurel Elementary and Jesse Barton in the amount of $250 for the maintenance of the softball fields. Do we have any discussion? Motion to accept. Second. Is Rick and Beth. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Looks like seven to me. That's what we're doing. Personnel under new hires: uh, Ruth Case, full-time custodian at Brookville Elementary School, with a start date of July 1. And Raquel Young will be the new transportation secretary at the administration building. Um, tentative start date is May 6 of 2024. Is there any discussion? No discussion? Is there a board action? So uh, moved. Beth and Rick. All in favor? Raise your right hand. 7 up. We have one retirement tonight. Um, Miss, Mrs. Joy Bishop, literacy coach at Brookville Elementary School, has submitted her intent to retire at the end of the 23-24 school year. Is Joy here? Oh, okay. Oh, a little late, aren't we? It's a tardy. I don't care. Detention. Um, Miss Bishop, I'll just say congratulations. I know my daughter loved having you when she was younger at elementary school at Laurel and enjoyed the time there. Joy is absolutely a prize at Laurel. There's no doubt about that. And she gives me a rough time every time I see her. Um, any discussion? Can't believe she's been here this long. To talk into the mic, please. Can't believe she's been here, and what a wonderful addition. And we'll miss you, Joy. <clears throat> Is there a motion? Katie. Katie and Rick. Randy? Rick. 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 Katie and Rick. All in favor, raise your right hand. It appears to be a pretty good seminar there. Okay, thank you. Extracurricular positions. The first one, um, volunteer girls softball coach, Whitney Gilman. Any discussion? I'll make a motion to approve Whitney Gilman as the assistant softball coach. I'll second it. 
Okay, so there was no discussion. We have a motion and seconded. All in favor, raise your right hand. We go on to the next. Um, we are already recommending our 2024-25 fall coaches for cheer team. Um, varsity coach Trey Allen, varsity assistant Kelly Mittendorf, volunteer cheer coach Gina Barker, and the middle school cheer coach um, Jill Snickter. Any discussion? I will say congratulations to the cheer team for getting the mascot. I know you've been trying to do that for quite a while. I know I saw Kelly there. I saw Kelly somewhere. Sorry. <clears throat> congratulations on that. That was in the grants. Any other discussion? Is there a motion? Rick, I'll second. Rick and Kevin, thank you for the help, Kevin. Appreciate it. Uh, all in favor? Looks like 7 0 again. Dance team assistant dance coach Chloe Cowan and volunteer dance coach Alex Holmes. Any discussion? Jessica, you probably have some discussion on how well they did. They've done great. Oh, okay. I don't know where to go. <laughs> they have, in all honesty, they've, they've done great. We've had, uh, I can't say we, I just participate in the younger dance teams, but uh, Chloe and Alex have helped Aaron this past year, and we're heading to nationals this weekend in Geneva, Ohio. Thank you, Jessica. Um, is there any other discussion? Do I have a motion? Katie and seconded by Beth. All in favor, raise your right hand. It looks like 700 to me again. Um, girls soccer, varsity assistant girls soccer coach Chad Bolser and volunteer girls soccer coach Cindy Adams. Any discussion? Is there a motion? Kevin. That was Kevin, seconded, Rick. Rick. All in favor, raise your right hand. Um, winter coaches, girls basketball, um, head girls basketball, Kyle Van Meter, varsity assistant, Zach Frank, junior varsity, Michael Kristoff, and volunteer, Whitney Gilman. Any discussion? Make motion to accept them. Rick made a motion. Is there a I second? Will, I will make a statement before we vote. Okay. Kevin seconded it. All in favor? No, no, I said no, no. I will make a Just statement make before I Okay. Discussion. Go ahead, please. It is in my opinion that there were specific conditions, parameters, and expectations discussed and set, place, set in place at the time Mr. Van Meter was recommended in the fall of 2023 for the 23-24 season. It is also my opinion that these conditions were not met and not in a subjective manner. Therefore, I will not vote in favor of this recommendation. This is not a reflection of the rest of the staff. I feel the head coach should decide who they would like to have on their staff. Therefore, as a result of voting as a collective group, they will be included in my no vote. We, we can separate that out if you so desire. No. I'm okay. making a motion that we accept them as, as they are. Is there a second? Beth, all in favor? We have did you vote yes, Randy? <coughs> okay. Yes, she did. Um, opposed? One. Wrestling is up next. <coughs> boys, basketball. boys basketball. Like boys. I said, boys basketball is up next. <laughs> boys basketball. Um, head coach, Wes Gilman. Varsity assistant, Derek no, Stang. you're reading I'm well. sorry. Mark Foster. Varsity assistant, boys basketball, Derek Stang, junior varsity, Dylan Huber, and freshman, Nick Van Oven. Any discussion? Now, on mine, it's got head basketball, Wes Gilman. That, it should be Mark right. Foster. That's, okay. I thought he was football. No discussion. Is there a motion? Make a motion. We accept him. That would be Rick. Seconded? I'll second. Jessica? All in favor? 6-0. 7 -0. Sorry. My math is bad. Wrestling, um, head coach Doug Dieters, varsity assistant Justin Lising, volunteer. We have two, Dan Payne and Dylan um, Humber. Any discussion? 
The resting, wrestling team has had an outstanding season this year. They should um, uh, be so proud of, of how far they go and how far they went this year. It's very hard to um, go w as far as they've gone and the individual um, uh, members making weight every week. So uh, I want to congratulate the wrestling team and I also want to um, move on to uh, uh, accept the wrestling core. Yeah, I think the, the wrestling team, I don't remember the last time they had a horde season. So uh, that's really hats off to them. Uh, great backbone for our athletic program. Francis, I would also like to congratulate the wrestling team. Um, I was able to make a, one of the meets this year and when I say what an exciting time and the support that they surround themselves by it's just truly amazing and I encourage any of you next year to come come out and watch because they're a lot of fun to watch thank you any other discussion is there a motion so moved I'll second Kevin second all in favor 7-0 um, gymnastics volunteer Andrea Ruff. Um, for for my information, we don't have a gymnastic team, do we? Don't they practice up in Connorsville? Correct. Okay. Any discussion? Make motion to discuss. Ruth makes the motion. Katie seconds. All in favor? Seven zero. Field trips. We just have one. Girls softball um, is requesting permission to participate in the Kokomo softball tourney. They'll de depart on 419 and return um, on 420, depending on game times. I'm not sure when that time will be back. They'll, they'll be back. Any discussion? If there's no discussion. If you have nothing to do this week, it's a scenic drive to get up there. I don't think Kokomo is very scenic, but okay. It's actually It'd be a, good to go see them. A enormous, extravagant stadium, and I say stadium. Okay, is there a motion? Rick, Rick, second. Kevin, all in favor? Oh, are we the cafeteria report? Finance, no. Well, finance. Okay, next up is our financial report. The corporation financial report, the education fund balance as of March 31st, 2024 was $5,456,582.71. A year ago, this balance was 4 million four hundred and eighteen thousand. Five hundred and forty-seven dollars and seventy-six cents. Kendra, sorry, I don't know if you're close enough. I don't know, I don't know if you're close enough to the mic. Here. Can you guys hear her out there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, the operations fund balance as of March thirty-first, twenty twenty-four, was three million two hundred and eighty-six thousand four hundred and eighty-eight dollars and eleven cents. <laughs> A year ago, this balance was a negative $882,054.50. Again, I'd like to remind the board that this is due to a bond um, that we did to reimburse ourselves for past operational expenses. Um, this soon will go into the rainy day fund, a majority of that. The investment interest earned year to date as of March 31st, 2024 was, one, excuse me, $154,899.79. This is compared to $39,962.25 a year ago. This is a discussion only item. Uh, is there any? If there's no discussion, we'll move on. The cafeteria fund balance as of March 31st, 2024 was $507,951.39. This is compared to $540,401.50 a year ago. 
and the latchkey fund balance as of March 31, 2024 was $19,396.50. This is compared to $7,846.01 a year ago. Any discussion? I, I do have a question. Is there any intent maybe to cut back lunch prices or is that a la carte that's causing this to um, uh, increase so rapidly? It is the a la carte um, that is mainly what drives the, the cafeteria fund balance to be so high. We have a high participation rate in the a la carte items. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We move on. The next item up is celebrations. Is Mr. Huber here? Yeah, he thought he might try to make it back. Um, so I didn't know I could go to a golf meet. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my educator of the month is not able to be here tonight. He is at the um, golf match, but I am proud to announce that my educator of the month for April is Mr. Dylan Huber, who is the special education teacher. <laughs> He has served Franklin County Community Schools for six years. Um, he attended Hanover College where he received his bachelor's degree in economics and minor in communication and business. He later transitioned um, through Taylor University. He was nominated with, um, for this honor by a student and a parent um, when asked why Dylan should be considered. Mr. Huber is an extremely hardworking teacher that cares about his students and their future. He is very dedicated to his job. Um, Dylan is very approachable, an amicable personality who could brighten anyone's day by his kind words. He really goes the extra mile in making sure all of his students are taken care of um, and has every chance to excel. Mr. Huber is simply the best. Um, in, in addition to his coaching responsibilities, which is golf, um, he is the junior varsity boys basketball team. Um, in his free time, obviously, he enjoys golfing, concerts, sporting events, and this is the first time I've ever seen this, porch sitting with his girlfriend. So, um, when asked what he loves most about his job, my favorite part is my job is giving back to the community that has given so much to me and where I was raised. I, I enjoy coming to school each and every day with the opportunity to help brighten a child's day or help them through some of their daily struggles. It means the world to me to help these children become the best versions of themselves and hopefully grow into someone that, that can help Franklin County community be the best that it can be. So congratulations, Mr. Huber. And then support staff of the month. Yes, um, I have. Please announce Cindy Adams, if she'd come down here. You have to stand beside me. Please announce that Ms. Cindy Adams has been selected as April Support Staff of the Month. Cindy currently serves as a cafeteria manager at Mount Carmel Elementary. Mrs. Adams has been with Franklin County Schools for two years now. She graduated from Wright State University with a Project manage Management Certification. Cindy was nominated for this honor by a parent. When asked why Ms. Adams should be considered for this recognition, they responded, Cindy goes above and beyond with providing tasty and nutritious meals for the students and staff at Mount Carmel School. She is constantly encouraging everyone to try healthier options and make nutrition a fun topic. She does all this with a smile on her face and kindness in her heart. More importantly, she tr truly cares for each and every student and staff member that comes into the cafeteria. In addition to her role in the cafeteria, Cindy has coached soccer for the last six years and has volunteered for many Franklin County High School sporting events. She teaches Sunday school and has led women's Bible studies. Cindy added, my family moved to Franklin County to begin a homesteading lifestyle. We have 11 wooded acres, live in a cabin, heat only with wood, and use a well for water. We forage for herbs, have an extensive garden, can and preserve our food, and play outside in the creek almost every day. When asked what the best part of her job is, Mrs. Adams responded, I absolutely, absolutely love to cook and serve others. I have a wonderful, hardworking, and dedicated staff that shares the same vision. If we like to eat it, the kids will like to eat it too. You can invite, invite me out to taste. <laughs> Just saying. 
We, what? We're having a tasting challenge tomorrow for Greek Day, and we're making euros and roasted chickpeas. So consider this your invitation. No, clear my schedule. When I semi-retired from corporate America, I wanted to find a new career where I could do that daily. This is my dream job because I just love to see and talk to the kids every day and receive many hugs. The excitement and joy when they walk in and see new things like a pizza oven or salad bar makes me smile every day. To see how many kids have fallen in love with fruits and, veg and veggies is special. While, in <clears throat> while my primary focus is the kids, I also take care of the teachers and staff. There aren't many options for lunch in this area, so we cater to their favorites, and I love making sure they have a great food to eat as well. Congratulations. Um, uh, you guys have to stand up. Um, my fr husband, Fred, is with me today, and my son, Hunter, and my daughter, Hayden, and um, uh, our amazing director, uh, Jessica DeFawcett, is with us as well. This is for you. Francis, I, I would like to make a motion to add another celebration or, or an acknowledgement. We can do it here or at the end of the acknowledgement, either way. Um, what prep. would the, uh, I don't have a problem. No. Anyone second it? I'll second it. I didn't hear that. I would just like to make another celebration or acknowledgement real quick. I didn't, yeah. just didn't hear you clearly. Make a motion to make another celebration or acknowledgement. Okay. Yep. I heard that. Yep. I'll second it. <laughs> Too late, I already did. Sorry. All in favor? I'm sorry if you can't hear me, but we're here. There was a donation made to them, so I just wanted to recognize all those that were involved in the play that took place right here uh, last week, week, two weekends ago. Sorry, it was a long weekend. Um, but yeah, I brought my son uh, here. Well, the whole family came, but it was a great time and very enjoyable. Obviously, he loved Shrek. Um, not to point or single anybody out, but the person who played donkey did very well and <laughs> held everything together. So congrats. if anybody's here, I encourage you to stand up. I don't know if anybody's here or not that was involved with the play, but not. I'd like to give them a hand for a great, great job. My uh, sister and brother-in-law came in from Pennsylvania and they had a young lady with her that we all went to see Shrek and they were absolutely enthused and uh, they would like Adam Hofer's email so they can tell them how delighted they were with that. It was the height of their trip. So they did a wonderful job. Okay, next up is statement from the public. We have none. Next is statements from employees. Now, we really don't have much of a policy for that and the school board association recommend we have the same one, but since we don't, and we have eight people speaking, we're not going to restrict that. In future policy, we'll change that. Um, we ask that you be respectful and address only the board, no individual members or used names. Um, am I missing anything there? So I'd like to make that motion. I'll second. All in favor of it? Okay. So first up is? Uh, Shanna New. Shan, be careful, there's a trap door right there. <laughs> I could only be so lucky. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. I volunteered to speak tonight for those who are scared of retaliation moving forward without a superintendent. Eight months ago, I sat in the same auditorium with a lot of these people as the Franklin County staff came together to get the year started. 
It was only my second time attending back to school in Franklin County, and I was a little apprehensive. You see, we were all a bit hesitant. We had lost one of our own over the summer, and we knew the morning would be difficult. Social media backlash had already started up again, and we were all a little beaten. Ms. Chavis took the stage, just as tired as we were, but the message was loud and clear. Kindness matters. For the last eight months, FC educators' morals, values, and ethics have been questioned. We've been attacked on social media. We've been accused of indoctrinating students. We have been questioned regarding declining enrollment and what we were doing wrong or how we could fix this. Yet again, we took it. We didn't defend ourselves. Kindness matters. For the last eight months, we have watched our superintendent get bullied and even threatened on social media by individuals who didn't have all the facts. We watched as the drama-laden 5% responded and bashed our district and the leader we respect. We watched as no one came to her defense or even set the record straight. We watched her take the high road. Kindness matters. Then in January, the social media attacks and threats picked up steam again, and our superintendent, feeling as unsupported as we do, decided it was time to retire. Again, no one came forward to defend her or set the record straight. No one made a public state one, statement. No one came to say, wait, there's more to this story. Somewhere along the way, we went from kindness matters to apathy and ignorance. The insecurities that staff are now feeling regarding school closures, declining enrollment, board unity, and other areas grew with the knowledge that the one person who understood what it really was like in the trenches with us was now leaving. The bullying that began in October of 21 when I started and picked up speed in June of 23 had won. It no longer mattered what the truth really was. Where was kindness matters now? Then came a social media post from a public school board member promoting alternate educa alternative education. Why would an elected school board member who had been questioning enrollment support students leaving and going to another school, further hurting enrollment? This time we asked why. This time we decided to come together and stand together. What do we have to lose? We're tired of being bashed and beaten. We're tired of not being able to tell the truth. We're tired of no one defending the amazing things we do. You see, what may be a board position to you is a livelihood to us. This is our passion, our career, and how we support our families. So we reached out. We were told to send emails. That feedback was welcome. So we did. We were professional and respectful, but we stated our feelings and stood our ground. We shared why we felt the way we did. We wanted to be heard. However, yet again, we were attacked on social media for sharing our perceptions and why we felt the way we did. Our confidential internal issue with the board was made public and we had to sit by and again do nothing. What should have been a Franklin County staff and school board issue had no place ending up on social media. It should have stayed with those individuals working to make FC schools better. Not put out on social media to get responses where only one side can defend themselves. It should have been addressed professionally. However, FC staff was yet again judged and attacked because we had differing views than a school board member. Are our jobs safe? If we continue to stand up for what is right, will we be targeted too? Does kindness still matter? Let me ask you a question. If Judge Cox staff took to social media and publicly supported Alex Dudley, what would happen? If the CEO of Pepsi walked through town carrying a can of Coke, what would happen? This isn't an issue of supporting all children. This is an issue of supporting Franklin County Community Schools children. This isn't an issue of who your best friend is. Each of you on the board made a choice when you took this position to do what was best for Franklin County Schools. The choice to set aside personal beliefs for the good of the collective happened the day you agreed to be on this board. The issue is supporting the staff and students that you were elected to serve, Franklin County Community Schools. Is that happening? And what will happen to those of us who stand up and disagree with you? I think the last 12 months speak for themselves. If you work for FC Schools, will you please stand? The individuals you see standing behind me are here because they want the board to follow the same kindness matters expectations that we do. We are not allowed to respond to social media 
and neither are our families. We deal with each other with dignity and respect. We communicate openly and honestly. We set up meetings and establish a professional forum to address our differences and come to a common outcome. We are asking the board to do the same. Keep your disagreements behind closed doors. And above all else, start defending what is right. Talk to your staff. Come to our buildings. Stop listening to the 5% that only want to create drama and division. You may be seated. So as I conclude, I leave you with this. It's time that the positive starts to outweigh the negative. It's time that the individuals doing the good, hard work day in and day out start to defend themselves. We have been quiet for too long. We had hoped that our actions would speak louder than their words. However, with no one defending the good, the consequences of their words have left lasting scars in individuals who simply want to teach. It's time for the 95% doing what is right to silence the 5% feeding into the divisiveness. The 5% that retaliates and bullies if you don't share the same beliefs or you have the guts to disagree with them. The 5% that hides behind a screen because they don't have the courage to face the alleged issues in a professional, respectful manner. The individuals that would rather throw insults than hear what's actually taking place in our great schools. At the end of the day, we are all professionals who deserve to be treated as such. We deserve to be heard and protected by this board. We are expected to follow policies and procedures, and so should the board. You have a choice tonight. Will you support the staff and FC schools, or will you widen the divide? Will you listen and hear their concerns, or will you make excuses for your actions? Stop the bullying, retaliation, and threats. Stop going after individuals who are amazing at their jobs, but might have made the mistake of disagreeing with you. Start listening to your staff. It's time to stop keeping the peace and start doing what's right. It's time to stop personal agendas and start bringing this community together. It's time the negative takes the back seat and the positive starts sharing the amazing things taking place in this district. It's time for the adults to demonstrate that kindness really does matter. And now I'd like to stop speaking for my staff and speak for myself. As I walk away, regarding myself as a professional and a leader within this corporation, I'm a lot of things. I own my mistakes, and I have never claimed to be perfect. However, I am not now, nor will I ever be a liar. I speak the fact, not false allegations. My professional record is stellar. If my words have stung you, good. If my words have made you angry, that's even better. Because change and growth will not happen otherwise. You don't have to agree with me, nor do you have to like me. If the only fault I have committed in this district to get me added to your radar and made me a target is to disagree with you, then consider the challenge accepted. Staff refle self-reflection is hard. I've said nothing that isn't true and can't be proven. I have offered to meet with you and air our differences, an offer that has gone unaccepted because it's easier to try to destroy my character and my career than it is to face mistakes that we have all made. I made a promise three years ago that if I made a difference, I would fight for the underdog, be kind, be a leader in strength, make a difference, and never, ever sit silently and watch injustice again. My agenda, improve the lives of the students and the staff that I was hired to serve every single day. Why? Because I believe and I hope I model in every action that I do that kindness really does matter. And if that threatens you, makes you hate me, makes you want to end my professional career, then I feel sorry for you. And now to you, to my Laurel family, to Tammy, and to my Laurel, my FC friends, if they, don't, if they decide they no longer want me to lead because I decided to stand up for you, I want you to know that you saved me. I will forever be grateful of what we've been able to accomplish together. We make a difference in the lives of children every single day because of what you do. Oh, and JR, I'm not weak anymore. 
I found my voice. Thank you for your time and for letting me speak. Uh, again, we ask you to refrain from using names. Hopefully, JR won't hold that against us. <laughs> Next up. Jana Ball. And I have to follow that. Okay. I am not a public speaker. I hate public speaking, so I'm going to look down and not at any of you. No offense. <laughs> I love my job. I love what I do. I love who I work with. And I love these kids in this corporation. And if I didn't, I don't live in Franklin County, so my kids would be going somewhere else. But they're here in this community because I believe in the system. OK. According to Merriam-Webster, accountability is an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions. This means that when you do something wrong or break a rule, you are held accountable for it. You own that you did the wrong thing and work to make it right. The state says that as a teacher, I'm accountable for my students' test scores for I read and I learn. They do not care if the student has trauma or an IEP, nor do they care if the student has missed an excessive amount of school. They just care about the score the student receives. This means that even if most of my students passed I read last year, the ones that have documented learning disabilities hurt my overall percentages, even though they tried to the best of their ability. So if out of 14 students, this is not true, this is an example. So if out of 14 students, six have documented issues that affect their learning, I will never reach 100% pass rate. As a student, as a teacher, sorry, I am accountable for teaching the curriculum assigned to me to my students. I cannot say I don't like this and then go elsewhere. I, cannot, I can supplement where I need to if my students need additional help. My students are accountable for their grades. This means I expect them to turn in their work. They are assigned and that they may receive a consequence, such as a zero in the grade book, if they do not turn in the work. We are all accountable for actions. When my son broke school rules and was suspended, I did not fight or make an excuses. Actually, I had to be calmed down, because I was a little mad, before they would let me see him. He broke the rules and had a consequence that he deserved for breaking the rules. It didn't matter that I was a staff member or anything else. The fact that was that he had done the wrong thing. He was held accountable for his actions by the school and by me. He has learned, I hope, that we do not solve problems with violence because of being held accountable. If we had just swept it under the rug because, oh, he's a good kid, or he didn't mean to, or, well, his mom works here, then he would not have learned a valuable lesson that actions have consequences. Everyone in the district is held accountable to certain standards and policies. As a school board, you made a policy regarding what people are allowed to post online. You chose to include a piece about not advertising for outside entities that take money away from the school's corporation. You also elected to include yourself in that policy's wordage. That means when one of you breaks the policy, you need to be held accountable for it. There are several options listed in the policy for the rest of you to choose from. If you do not hold each other accountable, then you cannot hold the rest of us accountable to those policies in the future. Thank you. Crystal. I come here tonight to support my teachers, my staff, and my principal. It may sound funny to some that I would call them all mine, but that's what they are to me. Why? Because for over five years, I have been the head secretary at Laurel Elementary. It is my job to make sure that its teachers, support staff, office staff, and students are all taken care of. I would like to think that I'm pretty good at it. My job has a lot of responsibilities, but the main one is support. At any given time of any given day, a teacher, an aide, a student can come to me to ask for help, and they know that I am going to do it. It doesn't matter if it's to place an order, to make extra copies, to help a student call home because they forgot their Chromebook, or just because they needed someone to vent to in that moment. I am there for them. It's not a hardship, a hassle, or an inconvenience. I don't look at it as something I have to do because it's my job. 
Instead, I welcome it. I want to be there for them. I want to help and support them. I see the time that these teachers and my principal put in. I see how much they care. I see the excitement on their faces as they tell about one of their students reaching a goal. I see the worry and concern when one of their students are sick or have been out for a few days with no call or when shoes are bought because a student was in need. But then I also see how they feel in times like these. When they see a divided board, when they have lost an amazing and supportive superintendent, and when they see any hope of support fading away, when they see bickering and hateful remarks back and forth on social media by people who either don't know all that's really going on or they're related to a board member, they are left to question what is to become of our corporation, a question that even I have been wondering. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? It starts with change. How about checking in with staff? Find out what the atmospheres in all the schools are. Try working with the principals and seeing what their needs are. I work in a building that is filled with paintings, uplifting quotes, and affirmations. Our students and parents love these, and we are told all the time how they wish that they could have had that when they were in school. But how many on our board have actually seen in person all of Mrs. New's paintings? How often do you stop in at the schools and chat with the staff or drop by for an after school event and talk to the parents who are there? How can you truly know how everyone feels if you don't ask? I believe that things can change and that they can become better for the future. I both want and need things to be better, not just for the staff, but for its students for my Laurel students, and for two of my daughters that attend this corporation. However, for change to occur, it means we cannot continue with the way that it has been. Everyone must try, and everyone must put in the effort, and everyone needs to understand what their duty is. I know what my job is, what my purpose is, why God put me where I am. It's to uplift, to support, to show love and kindness, from my students, my parents, and my staff. I know that it is something I try my hardest to do every day. It is also something I work on constantly. I know that I am not a leader. I probably never will be. I'm the support person. I'm the one in the background that cheers you on because I believe in you, and I know that you need that. You can lead. As a school board, you are both leaders and supporters. You can lead the way in change and in making these schools grow and blossom. You can also show your support for its staff and its students. My hope and prayer for tonight is that we can all begin to work together and that as a board, you can see how important it is for the staff to know that you support them and are willing to make the necessary changes to prove that. Because if a person cannot find it within themselves to try, and to look at things from the eyes of the staff to help them and to help them better this corporation, to do all that you can do to promote and help FC, then that asks the question, is this truly the position for them? Thank you. Lisa Schmidt. From the time I was 13 years old, I felt called to be a special education teacher. For me, it's been a mission field of sorts, a place for me to build up and empower students for whom school is hard every single day. An opportunity to show children that they are smart, valuable and capable members of society and to help families who need extra supports along the way. While my career started out in Ohio, in 2000 we moved to beautiful Franklin County. In 2004, I was excited to land a job as a special education teacher at Mount Carmel School. And for 20 years, I have worked with some amazing educators and leaders while pouring, pouring my heart and soul 
into meeting the needs of some of Franklin County's most challenging and amazing kids. And like my peers, often sacrificing time with my own family in the process. During that time, the changes I have seen in kids, family dynamics, level of parent involvement, and lack of unity for a cause completely boggles my mind. Especially in the past four years, we have become so quick to play judge and jury without knowing the facts. Instead of seeking to understand, asking questions, or doing research, we immediately jump to Facebook ready to convict. It seems we have zero tolerance for having differences of opinions or belief systems. Fuses are short, patience is non-existent, and the only way to solve a problem seems to be through public shaming. As educators, we have stayed silent. We've taken the punches. What are we teaching our kids? After 20 years in Indiana's public education system, I don't pretend to have all the answers on how to fix what is broken in Franklin County. My disappointment is not that there are alternatives to public education out there. Prior to moving to Franklin County, I homeschooled my two girls for two years, and they attended a private Christian school before that. It's that someone who was supposed to fight passionately for our school system was posting the option. It seems like a conflict of interest to me, and it felt like a slap in the face. This June, I'm retiring. My kids have all graduated. My grandbabies go to school in Ohio. This broken system will no longer affect me. For once, my family will come first. But I was not ready to go. I do not feel done. I have not finished what I started all those years ago when I was just 13 and building my career dreams. I'm just not strong enough to fight the fight anymore. It doesn't feel like this board wants to fix what is broken, and that is sad. Mostly sad for our kids, because they are watching and modeling what they are witnessing. The Indiana School Board Association has a code of ethics, 28 values it has created for all board members to follow. A few that they included, number one, always think in terms of children first. Provide adequate safeguards around the superintendent and other employees so that they can perform their responsibilities. Earn the community's confidence that all is being done in the best interest of school children. Work with fellow board members and administration to fairly determine the present and future educational needs of the community, just to name a few. You have work to do. You are losing great educators because a few of you seem to want to drain the swamp. Across this country, there is a massive shortage of teachers and educators. Our colleges of education are empty, and many universities are dropping their teacher licensure program due to a lack of enrollment. According to recent statistics, the number of individuals entering the profession has fallen roughly by a third over the last decade. Teachers are leaving the classroom at higher rates, and the pool of licensed candidates is not large enough to fill the vacancies. And sadly, who can blame them? It's my sincere hope that tonight you are listening with open minds. We've lost our leader. You allowed the abuse. Trust has been broken. Often we do not feel supported or heard. We love our jobs and the students that fill our schools, but we are so very weary. It's not too late. You can show our kids what true teamwork is all about. It's time for conversation. It's time to listen to understand. It's time for you to stand up to the few who are destroying our school community. Our kids are worth the effort. Zach Frank. All right, before I get started, I just want to say awesome job for everyone that's already spoken. Who is going to speak? I think you guys did an awesome job. Again, my name is Zachary Frank, and I'm a counselor here at Franklin County High School. I'm here today because I have seen a lot on social media and heard a lot of negativity about our corporation, which baffles me. Uh, this year, I feel like it has been the school board or the school corporation versus the community, and the community versus the school board or the school corporation. The only way we can become the best school uh, corporation possible is by everyone working together. How we bridge that gap is with the school board. 
I believe that if we all start working together as we become even greater and we can become even greater and stronger as a corporation and as a community. I graduated from Franklin County High School in 2012, and I believe since I graduated as a student and now coming back as an employee, Franklin County High School has become even a better school in terms of offering more dual credit classes than any school in our conferences. Getting endorsed in 2022-2023 as an early college high school and partnering with Whitewater Career Center for students who want to go right into the workforce and not into um, post-secondary education. We have done some great things this year, for example, bringing three new pathways for our students in band, choir, and art programs, and currently trying to bring another pathway to Franklin County High School with our JAG program. I would also like to share some other data to everyone. The class of 2003, we had three students graduate with an associate's degree, and 11 students who graduated with either ICC and other certificates in their particular workforce. <clears throat> The class of 2024, we potentially have 30 plus students receiving their Indiana College course certificates, which is their first year complete, uh, college completed. Then additionally, we have 12 students who will potentially receive their associate's degree, uh, which is their first two years of college completed. This is a 400% increase from 2023 graduates. Furthermore, the class of 2025, we have currently 25 students on track for associate's degrees. And additionally, again, 30 plus more students receiving their ICC. I have nothing but gratitude towards our teachers because they have bought into this early college program and they're always asking how they become dual credit teachers. They truly want what's best for our students, whether they move on to post-secondary education or go right into the workforce after graduation. So when I hear about all the negativity towards our corporation, maybe we should stop and think about all that we have done and trying to do for our students. Whether our enrollment for our corporation is 2,000 or less, because enrollment is dropping, we just need to focus on how we can be the best corporation we can be. And that starts by working together as a team. And if we don't do that, things might get worse. Thanks. Stacy Nobby. Thanks for giving me a chance to speak. And you know, as I look up here, like I have connections with every single person up there, like whether it's, I think I've been, I'm not allowed to say names, but I think I've been pulled over by one of you at one time <laughs> in my life. Um, there's a, you know, one of you, your, your son is a, has a special place in my heart. I think my sister might have babysat one of you. So we are all connected in this community. And, um, and the first thing I want to say is something I tell all of my students is we all have goodness inside of us. We all have goodness inside of us. So this is not, you know, an attack. But um, I am a special education uh, teacher at FCMS. Um, and, and I've also been elementary at Laurel, um, coached uh, cross country for the high school. Um, and I attended the, the Franklin County Public Schools from kindergarten through high school. I graduated from BHS, and then all five of my kids have attended from kindergarten through high school. Um, and then I've been teaching at this corporation for over 20 years. Um, I did teach at a private school for one year, um, but I do love this community, and I love this school corporation. Um, and as I've evolved, like as I've been involved in this corporation from the roles of um, student to parent to teacher and even a substitute teacher, um, I've just seen so many changes in education overall. Um, and at the beginning of my career, the reason I switched from private school to public school and sent my, my children to the public school was there were so many more resources. Like I knew if one of my kids had any kind of disability or needed anything, there were gonna be resources um, for my child. And, and when I started, I mean, we had, we had supplies that we, that we got for our classrooms. We were able to go to um, workshops. We had grade level meetings. We could give supplies to students. Um, and then all of a sudden it changed. It was like crazy. It's like, 
What just happened? Now all of a sudden we're not doing a good job. And you know, I remember during that time, um, it was all I-step, 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 and you know, we, we had to do I-step songs and stuff like that to encourage the kids. And, um, and I remember at one point, I had 80% or higher of my kids passing language arts, and I didn't get any credit for that. Nobody said, wow, what are you doing? Um, but boy, the minute the scores swayed the other way, it's like, man, what are you doing wrong? What are you doing wrong? And then um, it's like test scores became all that mattered. Um, and you know, I remember one time, and I don't think it was I learned, but I had a student that I, I met with her parents at conferences, and it was some other test, but it said for that child, no strengths were found. And I just, I'm emotional over that now. Like I had to sit there and look at those parents and that test said no strengths were found. And I said, let me tell you, your child has so many strengths. I mean, she's a wonderful human being. And it just, it seems like test scores were all that mattered. Funding started to be diverted away from us. Schools became business opportunities instead of solely being focused on the education and welfare of our students. Public schools, the foundations of, for communities by educating all children are being chipped away at, by initiatives that harm them. So, you know, it's like our state legislators, they just, you know, they've made these decisions, they've made the decision that a school is a business and that we're not a good business proposal, I guess. And I just, I find it regrettable that a board member supports these kinds of initiatives and deems it appropriate to divert students and subsequently funding from our public schools. According to the bylaws of the school board, the school board exists for the purpose of a governing system for providing a free public education in grades kindergarten through 12 for resident children as well as others who qualify to attend. I kind of reworded that last part because it was a lot. But since the state's funding formula provides funds per child in the amount of roughly $7,000 for gen ed students and roughly 500 to up to $11,000 in addition for special ed children, depending on their primary disability, every single student counts financially. That money follows students wherever they go. I, as a special ed teacher, do a child count three times a year because of this money. And let me tell you, with everything I do to have to stop and check all that information three times a year, that is not fun. And that's only about money. That's nothing to do with how that child's doing in my class. Um, so that, but that my, and, and so, you know, it, it makes me sad to talk about our children that way because my students mean so much more to me than a monetary amount that is, that is tied to them. But the reality is the loss of five to seven students means bigger class sizes and fewer teachers. The addition of five to seven students can add teachers and resources. And as our school grows, our legislators notice, they provide us funds and resources and let us teach and make decisions like the experts we are in our professions. My hope and expectation for our school board members is for each member to work together and with us to protect these precious funds so we can educate our most precious resource in our community, our children, and our future. I expect that each of our school board members would protect our public schools, our teachers, and administrators from the legislative decisions that have caused teachers to question why we keep doing this day in and day out. I would hope that our board members would know the bills that are being introduced and voted on and use their social media to inform the parents of the children that live in our community of these bills and inform them that these bills attack their children's free education. And then I would expect them to use their social media to educate our parents on how to contact legislators to voice their opinions and demand that our pu public school corporation is funded. I would like school board members to help the public see how we, the teachers, staff, and administrators do so much with so little, but we could do so much more with more. I mean, imagine if we, I could, we could rewind back to the resources we used to have. 
I'm disappointed that his current school board member did the opposite. You know, you know, we all know that this was on social media that a micro school that is not a public school was promoted on a social media. Information is being circulated indicating that this school does not take money from public schools. However, this school's website advertises that parents need to apply for an IESA account or, or scholarship, which is an Indiana Education Scholarship account. In addition, it points out that your child could attend private school. The website to obtain this scholarship application is an indiana.gov site which means it comes from taxpayer dollars and any money taken from taxpayer funds diverts money from public education. As I stated before, I'm a special education teacher and I'm doing great things in my classroom and with the support of Mrs. Chavis and my colleagues. But we are bound by laws and policies and we have limited resources. I would like to invite any school board member into my classroom to see the good things that are happening there. For example, just one of the many things I do is I write a kind note to each of my students each week. We have pockets and it's the power of positives. I want them to know that they are good. They are worthy of respect and success and they matter. Isn't that what all of us should feel? Unfortunately, the message I received from that post was the opposite. It's that Franklin County schools are not good. That Franklin County schools are not worthy of respect and success. And that Franklin County schools do not matter. Thank you for your time. Teresa Callahan. Good evening. I appreciate the chance to address the board tonight. I will be brief. I just want to talk a little bit about unity. I have worked in two Franklin County buildings during my long, wonderful career. I try to come to all the meetings that honor my former or current work friends as they're recognized as staff member of the month. Staff unity is important. That unity is what brings so many of us here today. Our corporation is lucky to have so many committed educators and support staff. We care about the success of our students, our schools, and our corporation. That is why we give our very best in our classrooms each day. And then we work late or we work on days off. Franklin County Schools need all teachers, all staff, all administrators and board members to stand together, to support each other and find ways to strengthen Franklin County Community School Corporation. Certainly as employees, strengthening our school system has to be our top priority. Thank you. Carol Blake. I had decided I wasn't going to speak tonight, but some people told me that was not going to happen. So um, I want to start by thanking the board members that responded to the emails that I sent. Um, I sent emails to all of you, and I think I had four responses as of about an hour ago. <laughs> I want to talk about accountability. I believe that we need accountability in Franklin County Schools and that starts with you, the board. So here is an acrostic of ways to be accountable. A is for accountability. Accountability is defined as an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions. Be accountable. 
C is for consequences. There are consequences for actions. Hold individuals accountable. C is for consistency. Be consistent in your consequences. It can't be one for the person you like and a different consequence for the person you don't like. Rules are rules. We need to be accountable. O is for ownership. Take ownership of your faults. We all have them. I have more than most. Be accountable. U is for understanding. Understand how hard the staff is working in all the schools. Don't assume that we, don't, we do nothing and that our schools are trash. I have a son-in-law who works in a different school corporation as an administrator, and it saddens me to say that in that corporation, Franklin County is referred to as a dumpster fire because of the constant bickering. It's embarrassing, and it, it shouldn't be that way. We need to be accountable. N is for needs. Put the needs of students first. That is what you were chosen to do. That is what I am responsible to do. We need to be accountable. T is for trust. Trust your educators and staff. We know what we're doing. Be accountable. A is for acceptance of all. We are a public school required to teach all, no matter our values, no matter their values. You are expected to do the same as a board member. Be accountable. B is for belief in this county and our school. Believe in who you represent or step down. Be accountable. I is for intolerance of policy breaking. You have established policies that need to be enforced. Be accountable. L is for loyalty. We are FC. Are you on our team or not? Be accountable. T is for transparency. We are tired of hidden agendas, indecision, and rumors. Be accountable. And Y is for you. We need you, the board, to do the job, make the decisions, and work together on our team. Please be accountable. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the teachers who made their feelings very apparent to the board that they need our support. You know, going backwards, uh, Carol Blake has been an absolute shining star in helping kids learn to read, uh, as was Teresa Callahan. Um, we owe them a great depth of gratitude because uh, as a reading recovery specialist, it's very difficult. Stacy Nobby has a special spot in my heart because of the fact that she coached my son and he went through a rough period and she helped him. And when he was in fourth grade, he would run around the playground with her. Um, and then he ran through with cross country. Uh, I've not met Zach. Um, that I can remember anyway. Sorry, Zach, you're kind of a forgettable person. No, that's not true. But Zach brings up a very strong point. If you put one strand of a, a twig, you can snap it. But if you put them all together, it becomes strong. And that's what we need is to become more strong. Crystal, well, she likes yelling at me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, don't mess with her school because she will let you know, but she cares. She is the heart of that school, and there's no doubt about it. And Jaina, uh, I, I told Shan to give you a message that brevity would be your friend because your email <laughs> was a, like war and peace, but it was well written, so thank you very much for that. And Shannon, she has really changed the atmosphere of that building, and the teachers love her. The parents even love her. I'm not going to say anything about her family because I don't want them to get in trouble. But the point being is she took her skill set into Laurel. And I used to get complaints all the time about Laurel. Now she's done an amazing job. And if you drive by there in the morning, you'll see her car there. If you drive by in the evening, you'll see her car there. And it's easy to spot because it's the only one there no normally. Um, my wife will rat her out. 
and tell her that she's staying too late. But those are the sort of dedicated employees. And I could go clear through each and every one of you and say the same thing about any one of you because you are the heart of the school corporation. And I think everyone up here on the stage values what you do. Sometimes, though, we forget that you are a vital part. You can't have schools without teachers. And I could not do what you guys do. I don't have the patience, the understanding, or the compassion. And you guys have all of that. And I applaud you for that. Francis, I'd like to say something. I've sat here and, and listened to everybody and very much appreciate what you said. I've been on the school board for a number of years now and I've strived every time I come to a board meeting to do the best for the kids, the best for the employees, the best for the custodians, the best for everyone that's associated with Franklin County School Corporation. And when I heard about the post at first, I got a little upset, but then, you know, I cooled down and I took offense to it because of everything that I've tried to do as a board member to make the school corporation better and to listen to Zach talk about the kid that's going to graduate with, a, with a, a associate's degrees. That makes me proud that we, we are able to give the things to make that happen. And we need, to, we need to work together as a school board, and we need to support every one of you guys. Because without every one of you guys, we're, we're nothing. You know? and, and if we don't do that, then all we're doing is hurting a corporation. And I think we need to, to kind of move on past this and start supporting everyone together instead of trying, you know, being a factious, is split apart in different ways. So that's all I gotta say. Would anyone else like to make a comment up here? I I actually would. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Jessica. teachers. That's Jessica. See, so we oh. don't know what she's going to say. It's Brandy. No. Oh, that's Brandy. Brandy. I'm sorry. I said it. So I would just like to say to all of you, thank you for all of your time and coming out. I want to also let you know that I do love our community. I love. I love it with my whole heart, and it's important to me. And I have a whole statement wrote out, and I'm going to stick to it as much as I can. But I do want to tell you, besides what I wrote, I love broken people. Anyone who knows me knows that that is where my heart is. So when I see someone that is broken, I try to mend them back together the best way that I've been taught how. So, I would like to say, I typically share community resources as well as Franklin County Community School Corporation resources on my face, personal Facebook page. My intention was not to harm the morale of our communities or harm the morale of our corporation. If I, my post did do that, I am sorry. That was not my intention. I do love every single one of you. Some of you I know on a more personal level. I actually student taught in our corporation. I've worked diligently when I was student teaching. Actually, I didn't share, but Mrs. Bishop, Bishop was worked with me, and I student taught with Mrs. Royce back there. I do have a heart for education. But, like I said, my intent was not to hurt anyone. That's not what I was doing. I do love you all because I love educators. I support you all and I do plan on coming to the buildings that I have not been at 
because I want to form a relationship with you. I think you deserve it. I think I deserve it. And I think our corporation deserves it. So I hope, moving forward, that we can all work together to make this school as great as it used to be and will be again. We will see kids coming. I have that hope and that faith. Thank you for your time. And like I said, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Would anyone else like to make a statement? I would. Good, because this I threw is you under the bus earlier. This yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, share some of my thoughts. I wrote down a lot of stuff, just as I'm hearing a lot of themes. And if you emailed me, I tried to email back. Um, I hope I got to everybody. I tried to, just because as a newer board member and really jumping into this entire big school corporation. I say big because we are big. We are a large area. Uh, we're unique. And as we're going forward, we do need what I'm hearing from everybody. We need action steps. We do need accountability. Uh, we need to drown out negativity with positivity. I just wrote down a lot of those uh, themes that I was hearing. Transparency, uh, I haven't said a lot typically because I feel like I've been taking a lot in, but I think we need more of that. So as, as a board, I hope we can all unite, we can work together, partnering with the teachers, all the staffs in every single building. Um, that was another phrase I had written down was protect us from somebody, I think. Um, so that, that's really what I, I hope to do um, as we move forward, action steps, actual things that we can check off a list and say we're doing these things to prove it. So uh, if I've responded to you by email, you know that's what I want to hear. I think that's what we all want to hear. Um, I do think you deserve more transparency and oftentimes in my own fault as well, we assume things are good if we don't hear anything. So that's really where I think we can step up and show more of that positivity. Uh, our perception is what they see about our school district from outside. If you're not in the building, that's all that the rest of the world gets to see is the perception of our schools. Um, and I would love to see every single household, every employee, board member, everybody just pouring Franklin County pride. That's what I would like to see. And I think we need that back here to keep everybody feeling together, protected, uh, feeling like we're doing the right things for our kids. So that's, that's my hope. And I love to hear from you all, as I have already. But please keep the communication. I have, I have one thing to say. My agenda in Franklin County has been um, 40 years ago when I started teaching. I have um, been retired for 10, so I'm old. But the kids of Franklin County have always been um, in my heart. I feel like our um, kids need as much push and as much uh, learning as they can get in because sometimes when our kids go away to college or go away to um, trade school or wherever, whatever and wherever, they need that extra push. And that's what um, I have always wanted to see out of our Franklin County kids. And of course we can't do that without hardworking teachers. And I know how hard it is to teach, have a family, do other things in the community, and so you are very much appreciated. We love what you do, and we just keep, must keep going for the kids of Franklin County. Anyone else? You're taking my mic. I'm sorry, you have to share. 
Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Katie Holman, and I was not raised in Franklin County. We've only been here for 24 years. So they tell me that that makes me a newbie. And, uh, but we love Franklin County. Uh, my husband drives school bus for Franklin County. He's bus number 24. If you have any problems, just find him. He's usually outside the elementary. My daughter teaches for Franklin County, and I've had the privilege of being on the school board for three years. When I came on the school board, uh, prior to that, I was a school teacher. I taught for 40 years, much like Beth. I used to think that I was the oldest, and we kind of argued back and forth on that, that status. So I think we share that point. But I do know what you're going through. And when I was first appointed to the school board, because I did replace someone that had passed away, so I was appointed. And there, um, in, during the meeting, they had asked me what an agenda that I had. And at that time, I told them, no, I did not have an agenda. I just wanted to be used. I love the children of Franklin County. I'm still involved with many of them. Um, I teach privately at home, and so I see many of your kiddos coming through, whether it's on the piano or whether it's on voice. I had the privilege of working for Mrs. Pat Smith, actually for the school, but just volunteering with her. But then six months afterwards of being on the board, I realized what truly my agenda was. I love the children of Franklin County. I would not have gone into teaching if I didn't love kids. But my agenda from day one, and most of the school mem board members know this, has been that I want to be a support to you. My first and more foremost support was that I supported my superintendent, that they knew that I was behind them 100% that I would reach out to the principals and let them know that I supported them 100%, that I would represent you in our meetings. And why would I do that? I've been where you've been, but the major part is if you have a happy staff, you're going to have happy kids. If you have a happy staff, if you have a teacher that feels that they're being valued, they will reach out to that child. And that's the only way that we're gonna reach our corporation is if we work together. And I truly, truly want to apologize to you for the riff that there has been. And I am so sorry. But we are here and we are listening. Just continue to contact us. I do have something to say, but I was going to do it during the legislative because I have a correction to make. Or, but if you guys are okay, I'll do the legislative part now. Okay. Um, I will make my statement, just the general statement brief. I have a long letter here, but keep it at this. One of the emails we received at the end, it said, I beg you all, I beg all of you, do better. I could not agree more. I have said as much. Everyone passed the test, great. Let's do better. High graduation great, uh, rate, fantastic. But let's do better. We win sectional, awesome, let's do better. We should always be striving to do better. Ups and downs happen. We will disagree, we will agree. We should be able to have those conversations, but let's always strive to do better. We are here, I am here to support you. Um, I added on here, as always, my email, I've been to all of the, the buildings. Uh, my meeting with the high school was pushed off because of scheduling. We just did that recently, but as always, my email is posted online. My phone number is readily available. It may not always be the response you want or the speed, but I'll always listen and do my best to help. Uh, on that note, uh, on the legislative, I don't really have an update. We have a meeting next Wednesday, which we will be going over the new bills and laws that have been passed and getting guidance on that. As far as the emails re we received, um, I said I, I have not responded to it, many of the emails because I felt it should be addressed by the board or in this setting. You guys, I think regardless of why, I think in the end, that was needed to let you guys speak. 
as employees and educators. Um, but the correction I do want to make on the legislative, and I'm going to maybe hesitate a little because I'm not trying to call anyone out, but um, I think something I said at the February meeting was misunderstood, and I want to make sure it does not come across the, the wrong way. Um, it was taken as my statement of the only shining ray of hope was a slight against the school or the teachers, and that's not what I was saying. I went back and watched the video. I, said, I did not recall making that comment, at least not in the fashion, that fashion for sure. So I have gone back and watched the video several times just to make sure I did not say something unintentionally. This is what I said. The big one, or the main ones, was Senate Bill 1 regarding the reading skills in third graders. The one shining ray of hope was that the two representatives that were there did discuss wanting to make sure training and funding were there before being too harsh. All I meant by that was I felt like, at least for a change, they were trying to have a solution on the other end of it or at least something in place to help you, not just throw a new rule or regulation on you or the school without any guidance. That was it. That was not a dig at our test scores. I, we had great test scores, especially Mount Carmel. I mean, that had nothing to do with it. But I just wanted to clarify that. If you ever have a question or think there was a misunderstanding, feel free to reach out to me, and I'm not trying to speak for anybody else, but I think anybody else up here would say that. We all need to do better at communicating. So that is all that I have. If there are no other comments, we'll move on. Up next is the 2024-2025 FCHS Academic Handbook Changes. I think Mr. Frank and Mrs. Shaver, are you here? Yeah, yes. So I, we, they, they have already, huh? I'm sorry. Do you have the superintendent's report? No. no. Okay. I, yeah. Um, they have been here before to give academic handbook changes. Um, this is, these are two new additions um, to add to that. Zach, are you stalking me now? <laughs> Are you stalking me now? I have it. I'm good. Thank you. I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, big troublemaker. Okay, so these are the academic changes. Is this suggested or is it a board action? Board action. Board action. Were these presented last month? No. No. So who would like to be the presenter for these? I am. Mr. Frank. Okay, again, it's talking. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, just a, it's called Franklin County High School Alternative Education. It's uh, called Achievement School for Franklin County. Um, this is kind of revamping our care program. Uh, so I'll kind of walk you through like what the application is and then um, or what it's about the application and go from there okay uh, so this is an application where you'll submit to your counselor and assistant principal uh, this review this review team will identify the target population okay uh, seniors obviously take priority followed by juniors um, these ideally these students will be credit deficient must be and then must have two PE credits already earned, okay? Again, this is also through our Play-Doh program that we already have through Admentum. Um, so again, it's just revamping it. PE credits are not on Play-Doh, so that's why we're gonna require those two to make sure. Okay, um, some things to consider for admission. Students, these students will lack success in traditional settings. Um, they may have personal family issues. Attendance and discipline um, may show on their records. records. Uh, they might have um, some motivation on a student motivation extracurricular activities um, and intake an intake meeting with the administrator counselors parents and students are required student progress will be evaluated on ongoing basis students must demonstrate progress in both the academic and career components discipline and attendance records will be reviewed and there will also be a meeting required for an exit if the student does not meet expectations 
These goals are to enable students to still earn credit and stay on track for graduation. Students work independently with a computer program under teacher direction. Again, it's our Play-Doh program. Um, and student attendance and behavior should be consistent with the handbook policy. So here's some things that we're changing. Uh, the schedule is obviously mirrored to our uh, new schedule for next year. So there's two sessions. There's an AM session from uh, 820 to 1120. And there's a PM session from 1205 to 305. Um, in addition to earning the achievement school through a student assigned three hour blocks, the student can also earn six credits throughout the year through work based learning. Uh, this is also depends on if they have a job. So if they have a job and they're working 150 hours throughout that semester, you can gain three credits per semester as a junior and three, uh, an additional three credits as a senior each semester, so a total of six. Um, if you flip the page, this is the actual application process for this achievement school. So the, the students will fill this out, turn it in again to the counselor and or assistant principal, and then we'll have a meeting. Session time, um, for instance, the AM, if the person works in the afternoon, they might go in the AM session so they can get to work and vice versa. If they're in the PM session, it could be because they work till 1130 at night. So they kind of need that sleep to get to school and then they can work again at night. Um, these times are not guarantee uh, the replacement specific session. It just depends on where we're where we have room. Um, we're going to probably open this up for 30 kids only. Um, that's what the state we can have 15 in each session. So a total of 30. The work based learning is a CTE. So it can um, add additional funding to our school fund um, that funding is $500 per student. So if a student is at a job and we put down work based learning work-based learning, um, we can earn additional $500 per student. Um, and then additionally, this is also to, um, the next page is the online option. Um, this is also the achievement school is to kind of stop the online. As I talk to other corporations in our conference, like Batesville, Greensburg, and all that, they do not offer online policies. So again, this achievement school is to come in place so that way we have every student coming to school, more accountability, they're graduating still and not falling short of credits, which is what we're kind of dealing with now. Um, but there is still an online option. Um, if you kind of go through this, there's 10 things that um, require um, for you to be thought for the online. Um, again, if you're online, student is at risk for not graduating on time. This is just because this year data showed about 76% of the students that were online first semester had to come back because they were unable to complete five of the six classes online. So that's a high number. We're trying to change that. So we think if they're here, they're held, being held accountable, doing the work, they'll still stay on track. Um, and you can kind of go through that. Number 10, our follow our online policy. That's also the second handout that I go. It goes in more in depth. Um, the big ones that we're changing also is that if a student is online, they're not able to participate in any extracurricular activities and students are not able to participate in planned school activities such as prom and senior trips. Also, since we are early, early endorsed college, uh, students at risk of losing dual credit opportunities to help them in further education. Um, again, we're just here to revamp our care program into this alternative education um, and kind of go from there. That's all I got. Can I ask one question? Yep. Is that okay? Does that, with the extracurriculars as prom and uh, whatever else was listed, sorry, I don't recall, prom and senior trip, are they all, are they able to still participate in commencement activity? Uh, as an online student, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's just the, uh, if just you're an online, extras. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, I don't, I don't get this. Um, sorry. So we, oh, do you want me so, to? So Zach, um, does this student have a pathway then? So we have the business uh, pathway online through our Plato program right now. So like if they're online or they're in the Plato rooms, they're automatically into our business pathway, which is principles of business management, accounting fundamentals, and marketing fundamentals, and that's a pathway. Okay, so when they graduate, mm -hmm. then I know diplomas have changed, but is this 
student going to get a diploma then? Oh yeah, they still get a general, like they're still on track for the core 40 diploma. So box one of graduation requirements is gonna be still your core 40 diploma. Uh, box two, your employability skills as if they did participate in any clubs or certain school activities that can count and then pathway is still the business pathway because that's what's offered on momentum still. So they still are able to check all three boxes for graduation. So okay, this is just a primary to stop online school and like other schools in our conference like we had conversations with. So we have a lot of students that were online first semester. We had about 30 something students. About 26 of them had to return because they failed to complete five of the six classes, which is about 83% uh, of your classes. They actually failed a lot of them, like they didn't even attempt six of the classes. So they all had to come back. A lot of those were seniors and now they're fighting for graduation. So again, this is to bring a program that other schools have instead of them going online and doing work at home and having little accountability is that they're out of the traditional classroom setting and they're in Play-Doh doing online work but here three hours and still able to uh, go to a job if needed depending on um, and still working but still coming to school to get their credits done does that make sense it's a little bit more a little bit <laughs> um, they still earn credit in this program so like if they are they still need to do like math credits or science credits or English credits we upload them in this program and they just do it through the computer, but while they're here actually at school, so that way we know they're getting stuff done and earning credit in order to graduate. Does that make sense? So a student in this, in this consideration here, or in this uh, achievement school, um, mm -hmm. will they most likely graduate in four years? Oh yeah. So for instance, I'll use myself as an example. If I was a senior here at FCHS and I was credit deficient, which means I'm not on target to graduate. So going in your senior year, you should be very close to 40 credits. But let's say uh, traditional classroom, you have seven credits each semester, which is 14. So that's uh, 26 credits I would need to be at by the end of my junior year. Let's say I'm at 20. I am credit deficient, so then I can go into this achievement school, okay, and I can upload all those classes and get those done on an online program so I'm in order, I can still graduate my senior year. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's, it, oh. it, it makes sense, but I don't know how they can make up five credits, but I guess you make up credits so, by working and Yes, yeah, so you correct? can earn six credits a year for working. So instead of taking all those elective classes and they do work-based learning, they can actually mm -hmm. earn credits towards graduation by having a job. Okay, so having a job, is that job in in their pathway? Yeah, so business pathway, a lot of those jobs meet that criteria. So business pathway, if they work at Gilman's, they're learning about the business. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Hi. <laughs> okay. I, I do, Francis, sorry. Um, I just want to make sure I am understanding. So this is not just for the first line student like success in traditional setting. Like if somebody chose to do this and they wanted to go get a job and start supporting or maybe their life called or demanded that they could just choose to do that kind of, kind of like a we called it ice when i was in school that's what greensburg okay. calls it yeah it's the same thing okay. but it's work-based learning so the, yeah. the, they could do it if they just choose to yeah okay yeah I just want to say I think it is a great thing because I know so many kids at the high school that struggle to stay there all day and I do know that we have a lot of kids that choose an online option because, how do I say this, they're hands-on boys, let me just say it that way I guess, and they want to go out and they want to work and they don't really want to stay at school because they have big dreams and they don't quite realize that sometimes those big dreams take an education. Mm -hmm. So I do think that it's a good program and I want to tell you guys thank you for thinking of all those kids. Any other conversation? I'll make a motion to approve the alternative education and handbook changes. Thank you. Who would like to second it? 
Somebody down there did. Was it Rick? I got it. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> All for that. Um, next up is recommendation for food uh, services contract. Jessica DeFawcett, our food service director, is recommending we purchase from the following companies. U.S. Foods for our mainline distributor, Piazza. Produce and specialty foods for produce. Clusterman for bakery. Commercial food systems for snack and beverages. And Prairie Farms through our co-op for milk. Now, we are lucky that this has been um, bids that we've uh, had for five years. So instead of going out and fighting for the, against inflation, we're able to lock those in and have those locked in prices for this coming year. So we're, ac we're asking for approval of those bids, please. Okay, any discussion? Need a motion? So moved. Beth, Kevin, is it Kevin or Rick? Put them both down, no. Um, all in favor? 7-0. Uh, and next up is a board discussion on current agenda policy 0166.1. It's our consent agenda. Um, we had some items severed out uh, tonight. Normally, what the board could do was extract out an individual based on their desire to vote for or against him. I'm sorry. Um, to vote for or against the individual. Uh, and while well, we had this policy two years, approximately two years, uh, Kevin was the first one to vote no on something. Um, he wants to change it to where people know who the new hires are. Am I correct on that? Don't, don't let me paraphrase. You, you say what you want. What uh, it's going to pull up what I had typed out. Um, the consent agenda, I feel, is a lot of important information that is, for lack of a better term, glossed over. Um, it took us 12 minutes to go through everything for the grants, donations, field trips, hires, uh, retirements, and coaching decisions and recommendations. One, I think the public wants to know those things and not have to search for them. Uh, we had an instance here where somebody, I forget when the meeting was, but they were being hired and they walked out of the meeting not even knowing if it was done or not because it was in the consent agenda. I think it's great to recognize Miss Bishop in her retirement so that now everyone knows, if unless they don't want it announced, that gives everyone time to celebrate them hey congratulations we're so proud of you you know good luck in the future things like that um, that is all I am asking or the reason I'm asking I'm sure I'm forgetting something on what it was the grants and donations I think it is very important to recognize the people that have donated the money um, or helped us get grants it's a big part of what we should be doing is trying to get those grants and other things to help with getting a mascot or whatever the case may be. So I think it's important to announce it out loud, vote on it. We can group them together a little bit like we did tonight. Um, if something needs to be called out individually, we can do that as well. Uh, that That's my only intent behind it. So. Any discussion there? I'll add, I'll add to that. I uh, have to agree with Kevin. I, I think a lot of the question I get is, oh, what, who'd you end up going with for this coach or, you know, things like that where um, that's a lot of what our, our county wants to know, um, especially the celebrations. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of the meeting. I'm sure you all will agree with that. So um, when we can celebrate a retirement, um, a new hire, 
I, I like to be able to display that um, just so that everybody in the spirit of transparency, again, can see what we are approving um, as we go through. And, and yeah, I would agree, like grouping together, like we did tonight with some of those makes sense. But as long as the names are out, we know who we're putting in those positions. I think that's what everybody wants to know. I think it went extremely well tonight. And a lot of people got to say things in addition about teams, teachers, staff. So again, that's, that's my intent behind it. I, I'm not against most of those things, but I don't see the point of going through the individual grants because we apply for those. And if a person really wants to know where they are, they can find it in the consent agenda pretty easy. Um, I do think it's a good thing to promote and advertise the donations where people realize that because I don't think a lot of people think about that. So I'm for that. The, the agenda as far as personnel goes, what would have been your opinion, Tammy? the personnel, the new hires. Do you have an opinion? No. Okay. Um, and then the retiring people, We in June we normally throw a big soiree, Joey, mark your calendar, um, for them then. I think most people know who's going to be retired. I don't see the point of dragging that aside separately. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. I'd like to make a um, just a suggestion. Um, since we're kind of in new waters here, because what would you say two years ago we went to the consent agenda? Um, if I think if we could all kind of settle down and just kind of think about what we want in the consent agenda. If we want everything out, then that's fine. But Francis, you just said that you had some, I, I have some problems. I think we need to all agree on what we need to bring out publicly. And what are we going to do if we don't want that, uh, if we do have a problem with a higher or yeah that's that's the point of our discussion right now I would like to um, I would like to give us a, a month to uh, discuss what we want and what we don't want and what we want to include in that so you want to table this to next meeting next week meeting next month. yes yes next. I would like to do that is there a second? I'll second yes. that. Wow. I thought Katie was going to hit me there. Um, OK. All in favor? 7-0. So that will be a future agenda request, request. You've already done the legislative update and the other. Um, we have the future agenda request. I think we also need to revisit the employee statement. Uh, to where there are solid ground rules to where the employees know when they come here what they're what they're allowed to do i think that would help them out a lot um recognition acknowledgements do we have any okay. miss chavis i would like to thank the board and the school corporation uh, we've had a pretty difficult time in the isaacs family here in the past three weeks but i appreciate the kind words uh, the phone calls, the texts, and uh, the flowers for the passing of my father. So thank you. Yes, our condolences, Keith. Yes. Well, with that, we will adjourn. The next regular school board meeting will be 7 o'clock p.m. Monday, May 13th. Bad day. Uh, 2024 at the Franklin County Administration Building in Brookville. Thank you all for attending and participating.